Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for worship today. A couple announcements before we begin. Uh, you'll notice this uh, little insert in the news and notes. Uh, this is about our vendor fair coming up in November. Uh, we have these little flyers and there's um, more in the narthex. Uh, the idea is that not only it reminds you, but you can spread them around, share them with others so that people know that the event is happening. Uh, the more people we get there, the better. So um, you can uh, take a look at that, spread that around. You can take more from the narthex. Uh, you'll also see the, the sign up board for, for volunteers. We're looking for volunteers to help with the vendor fair. So you can sign up there. And you can uh, donate uh, lightly used items to the new to you booth that the owls are putting on. Uh, the shelf is in the narthex there as well. So um, keep that in mind as, as the months go forward here. A uh, special thank you to everyone who attended uh, Janice Dronka's funeral yesterday. Uh, it was great to see those of you there uh, to remind us all of the great promises that Christ gives us of life everlasting in him. Uh, lots of other things going on um, here at Holy Cross. Be sure to read through the news and notes to see uh, all of the good things that we're doing here. For our service today, we'll be using Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184. And we're going to be hearing uh, in our service today the theme of God's generosity uh, in giving salvation to his people, uh, his grace and his mercy. Uh, we're going to see that especially in the gospel lesson uh, where Jesus tells a parable of, of a master hiring workers in the vineyard. And so we'll be looking at that uh, throughout our service today. A special note about our service today. Uh, you'll notice for when it comes to the hymns, uh, we're singing hymn 555 three times in the service. Not all the way through, uh, but it has ten stanzas uh, total in the hymn, and so we'll be singing portions of that hymn throughout the service. So our opening hymn will be stanzas one through four of hymn 555.
continue on page 184. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor, merciful sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am all the merciful of them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you that the God of mercy, and that you will save the whole of you. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bond. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and call on the name of the Lord.
afraid. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us trust in your abiding grace and live according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, the 55th chapter, verses 6 through 9. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle from Philippians, the first chapter, verses 12, and four, 12 through 14, and then 19 through 30. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to the rest that my imprisonment is, in, is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, 
this will turn out for my deliverance. As it is, as it is, as it, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not at all be ashamed but that with full courage now as always Christ will be honored in my body whether by life or by death for to me to live is Christ and to gain or to die is gain if I am to live in the flesh that means fruitful labor for me yet which shall I choose I cannot tell I am hard pressed between the two my desire is to depart and be with Christ for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is clear, a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the 11th hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Yay! 
Together we confess our historic Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. You may be seated as we sing stanzas five through seven of hymn 555. and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. These words from our Old Testament text today beautifully summarize the message of our gospel text today. While these words from the Old Testament are often used to explain why bad things are allowed to happen in this life, they actually speak about God's generosity and His grace towards humanity. And this is exactly what Jesus' parable is about this morning. God's generosity and His grace and mercy. Jesus tells this parable of a man who hires workers for his vineyard, as we hear from the text again. The kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, 
because no one has hired us. <clears throat> he said to them, you go into the vineyard too. We see the master hires these men not just at the beginning of the day, but at multiple points all throughout the entire day. The beginning of the day, starting around 6 a.m., then the third hour, 9, the sixth hour, noon, the ninth hour, 3, and the eleventh hour, 5 p.m., about an hour left in the workday. Notice what the master then says to each of these groups, and it is significant. In the beginning, he agrees with the laborers, and the laborers agree for a denarius a day, a full day's wage for their work, and they are sent off to do that work. For the next three groups, those hired at the third, the sixth, and the ninth hour, the master says, go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. The master here does not guarantee a full day's wage. And the workers probably would not have expected a full day's wage since they're only working for a part of that day. But they hear the word of the master that he says, whatever is right, I will give you. And on that promise, they go into the vineyard to do their work. To the last group, those hired at the 11th hour, the master simply says, you go into the vineyard too. Whereas the last group, at least, the master promised, whatever is right, I will give you. This group is not given any such promise. They're not told that they will be paid anything, but they are simply told to go work in the vineyard and trusting that the master will do what is right and having nothing else to do, they go into the vineyard. This master hires all of these people to work in his vineyard, most of whom don't know what it is they will receive at the end of the day, which sets up for the second part of the parable, the payment that the master gives these workers. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? The master ends up paying all of the workers a full day's wage from those who were there from 6 a.m. to the workers who were there but one hour to work. All of them are paid a full day's wage. Now that might seem unfair. Those who were there first worked far more than those who got there with one hour left in the day. And that's exactly what this first group complains about. We worked far more than these other People, we had to be there during the heat of the day. We bore the work the entire work day. These people only worked for an hour, not even in the hottest part of the day. How can they get paid the same as us? It doesn't seem fair. But what this reflects is the master's generosity. After all, he says, it's my money. I own this, not you. And so I can give how I see fit. And so, out of what we promised, I gave you what we agreed upon, what is just and right. But I choose with the rest of these servants, these hired workers, to give above and beyond what they truly deserve. They only deserve a portion of that, but I choose to give it in full. 
Now this parable does not serve to teach us that socialism is the way of our society, but rather it is meant to teach on the generosity of God towards humanity in regards to his salvation. You see, the world wants things to be fair. That what it is that you do, you get what you deserve. If you do bad, then you should be punished for it. If you do good, then you should be rewarded for it. That based on how you live and what you do, that is exactly what you should receive. But we should give thanks and praise to God that he is not a fair God. For what is it that you confess at the beginning of the service? What is it that you say that you deserve? Not righteousness, not salvation, but rather that you deserve temporal and eternal punishment. For you have sinned against God's law countless times throughout all of your life. And so the thing that you deserve is not God's mercy, not His grace, not His generosity, but you deserve the punishment that the law should bring. You deserve death. But God, in His great mercy and generosity, gives you salvation instead. He sends His own Son, Jesus, innocent of all sin, down to earth to take on your sin, to suffer be mocked, be persecuted, and die on a cross. He would go through a a trial where false witnesses accuse him of things he never did, and he is deemed guilty of those very things. Not fair at all. But Jesus willingly goes into this unjust trial, this unjust death, that you would be saved from death. That your sins would be forgiven and you, instead of facing the death that you justly deserve, would be brought into everlasting life with him and all of the saints. God shares that salvation with the world, with all believers. Not just the lifelong Christians who have been baptized from infancy and remained true in the faith. But to all who call upon the name of the Lord, they are saved. That salvation is given to all believers, even the ones who aren't Christians until the hour before their death. Those who call upon the name of the Lord are saved. God, in his great generosity, gives full salvation to all who believe in him. And in all of this, we are called to be humble. We should rejoice in this generosity of God. Whether you're the worker who worked the full day or the worker hired with one hour left in the day. Whether you've been a Christian your entire life from infancy onward or if you just became a Christian this morning. God works his salvation for all who believe (coughs) Now, the temptation can be to think that you, as a Christian, deserve more than others. Well, I've been a Christian my whole life. This person just became a Christian not too long ago, lived decades without being a faithful follower of Christ, whereas I've been in church every week for decades myself. If he deserves salvation, then certainly I deserve far more than that person. Or, I have lived a holy life, relatively speaking. I go to church. I give my tithe. I love my neighbor. I live pretty well. Yet this person over here, I know how they live. I know the sins that they commit. But yet Jesus says that when he repents, he receives forgiveness. If he receives forgiveness for his sins, certainly I should get more than what that person gets. But you must remember what we said earlier. You do not deserve anything but punishment from God because of your sins. You might think that you are often that worker at the beginning who's been faithful the entire day. But in reality, you are that last worker who deserves nothing, who has just sit there idly, stuck in your sin. And it is only by the gracious 
will of God that you are brought out of that sin. It is forgiven of you, and you are given life and salvation. God graciously saves you from sin. And therefore, you should rejoice in the generosity of your master. His grace and generosity to poor sinners like you and all those in this world. This is why the Old Testament passage is a great summary of this parable. For God says, my ways are higher and above your ways. Our ways would be to give people exactly what they deserve, probably less than what they deserve. Whereas God gives his grace free. Out of his generosity, he gives full salvation to all who believe in him, even though you and no one in this world deserves any portion of it. This is the will and the ways of God. You see, the kingdom of heaven does not work like the kingdom of this world. And God be praised for that. If it did, we would all be found guilty of sin and be condemned to hell for eternity. But by God's grace and his generosity, we are forgiven of our sins in Christ Jesus. By his death on the cross, salvation is won for us. And we are given life everlasting in him. So let us then rejoice in the generosity of our Master who generously gives us and all believers salvation from sin and from death. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as we continue with the offertory on page 192. stand for the prayer of the church. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
We give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us, that with good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. Lord, in your mercy, we humbly implore you to rule and govern your church throughout the world. Bless all those who proclaim your truth, that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, and that faith in you may be strengthened, love towards others increased, and your kingdom extended. Send forth laborers into your harvest, and sustain those whom you have sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people, and the gospel preached in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, grant health and prosperity to all who are in authority, especially to the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy, according to your good pleasure, turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries, that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and in peace. Lord, in your mercy, comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit, all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. Grant courage and steadfastness, especially to those who suffer for your name's sake, that they may receive and accept their afflictions in the confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Especially this day we pray for Bob, Judy, Marion, Wendy, Drew, Whitney, Alan, Eddie, Mike, Marv, Sally, Darlene, Edith, and all our shut-ins. Give them grace and strength during these days that they would be kept in the one true faith. Lord, in your mercy, although we have deserved your righteous wrath and punishment, Yet we ask you, O most merciful Father, not to remember the sins of our youth, nor our many transgressions. Out of your unspeakable goodness and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger to body and soul. Preserve us from false doctrine, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, from hail and tempest, from failure of harvest and from famine, from anguish of heart and despair of your mercy, and from an evil death. In every time of trouble, show yourself a very present help, the Savior of all, especially to those who believe. Lord, in your mercy, cause all needed fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the young, to all lawful occupations on land, sea, and air, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, crowning them with your blessing. Lord, in your mercy, receive, O God, our bodies and souls and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring you. For by his blood your Son has purchased us to be your own, that we may live under him in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, these and whatsoever other things you would have us ask of you, O God, grant us, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the Sabbath. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. Take and drink the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Please stand for the Nunc Dimittis on page 199. that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you.
and give you peace. A reminder, our closing hymn is stanzas 8 through 10 of hymn 555.